welcome to Midlander Gaming. Sorry it's been a bit of a delay for before the next episodes came out. Um, we've obviously had Christmas. Uh, I've also been distracted with a few other projects which I'm not going to slow down this episode with but maybe there will be another playlist and some other gaming items uh, released in future videos. Uh, but for now let's uh, concentrate on the current episode which is flames of war and a build up and preparation with my or for my battle with rob um an update on rob's side he's uh, began his projects um, he's well in on his way to completing his army um, already made already primed and he has some paint on his models i would recommend you to check out his videos um, i'll put a link in the description if I know how to do it, I'll put it up on the screen somewhere, but I'm not that technically savvy, so probably won't be. Um, but fully recommend you check out Rob's videos. Go and visit him, give him a like, subscribe, and it will be good to see uh, the other perspective of our challenge. In time, once we've both got our armies ready, we have a preliminary dates booked for a game. Um, the good thing about that is it's obviously going to give us a drive to complete a date or a deadline shall we say to complete these part these these projects the painting and the making and and also um, a couple of practice games i think to uh, hopefully at least have a game that's <laughs> watchable <laughs> um so yeah there's been uh, apologies for the little delay between last episode and this episode i have managed to get some hobbying done um so that's good and i'll i'll go over what i've done here today um yeah i think uh <laughs> that, that's really it so I, I guess without further delay let me switch over the screen so you can see how i've been getting on and i'll talk you through apologies again it's going to be a bit of a present uh, powerpoint presentation i'd love to be able to have a um, live video footage maybe some uh, live painting um, but for now i'm afraid it's I, I try and capture images as i do it and unfortunately i don't do a great job the lighting is very poor um, um, so work with me um, but hopefully over time we'll improve the quality of the presentations so i'll flick over and uh, give you a bit of a hobby update so hopefully you can see the screen now um, and uh, basically an update from where we were before showing you the starter set and in all its glory fully completed uh, infantry and all the vehicles from that starter set uh, now the great thing about this starter set was although I built enough infantry um, as was recommended in the set uh, you do actually get a few more infantry although you not don't get the basis to put them on but you get a few more infantry than than what is shown in the box set so i went out and bought this uh, lovely uh, rubble style bases set um, so i could produce even more infantry than what was originally shown and obviously this uh, nice scenic sort of base just helps straight away great give a nice feel so there you can see um, the original infantry plus the extra infantry I got and got all made up. Um, and the, the start of the force. So how have we been getting on? There we can see the starting of the uh, painting of the force. Now my feeling for this project was to get the infantry out of the way first i had a feeling they were going to be the most painful to do um mind numbing maybe maybe monotonous um and i must admit i actually kind of enjoyed painting them in the end um now those of you who are very into your historic war gaming and getting everything accurate might not be happy with what i've done um but to make it more enjoyable was I tried to use as many contrast paints as possible so 
this was my test piece that I did um, using the contrast paints to hand and a couple of Vallejo paints just for things like the cam camo to make that stand out because contrast paints didn't stand out um, as much. Um, but yeah, the good thing was with the contrast paints was I could get a 80% finished part very, very quickly and just um, do some finishing touches like the camo um, and the guns and things just to just to complete the model. So I was happy with my test piece. With that test piece completed, I uh, went on and carried on priming the rest. Now the, the primer I used was the GW um, Wraithbone, I think, that's, that's designed for the contrast paints. Um, just find it does give a quite, for a white paint, it does give a nice, quite a smooth finish. You can see on the, the base there, it's quite a smooth finish. Um, so yeah, so the contrast paints then go on quite well. And at this small scale, I really don't want too many lumps and bumps um, because uh, it's already quite small, as you can see by my horrible finger na nails in the picture. Um, so that is my test piece and some shots of the infantry ready for painting. And here, straight away, we jump to pretty much the recommended um, infantry from the. the box set uh, complete and painted obviously the base is just a, a wash at the moment I think I did a might be a snake by 11 maybe on, on as the base just to give it a, a brown coating ready for basing and flocking but you can see um, just uh, unfortunately it was a little while ago so I can't remember all the colors but the I'll go, on a later picture I think we'll go over some detail of what I've used but you can see um, Got, uh, the, everything I need from the infantry teams painted up and, and, and out of the way nice and early, nice and first. Now I don't know if these colours are 100% accurate. I did use the, the Flames of War book to give me a guide on you know how they look and that they have some camo and then the trousers are not quite as green as this but the other thing I noticed when I did a very light bit of research with German um, fatigues was there didn't seem to be that much of a standardized color you can see even variations in gray uniforms and things so and, and even variations in uniforms within a within a section or a unit or a platoon or whatever the, the terminology is so with that in mind i wasn't that fussed if it wasn't 100 percent accurate because i couldn't really see a guaranteed standardized color for the armies anyway so so i don't know if i'm way out thereabouts or close but to me i'm happy um especially with the commander i don't know why but it just seemed like he should be in a gray great coat and gray officer peak it just seemed to look nice and also stand out from the rest of the units i can see straight away which one is the the commander so overall very happy with how the infantry came out the only thing I would say is that from a distance you could barely see the camo that I'd, I'd applied. Um, so after doing all that camo I then did start thinking did I actually need to even bother with the camo and uh, just leave it as, as plain jackets, tunics with just the base colour. So um, up nice, up close like this you can see it and pick, pick it out and it looks pretty good but yeah from a tabletop distance when you're gaming I'm not sure it's actually necessary but anyway um, and here's some pictures of the basing methods I've used so it was like a brown flock with some static grass and clump foliage on there just to, to finish it off and then I wasn't really happy with the brown edges so I just painted it, those in black and there you can see was after I completed all that I started on my second um, unit using the, the regular bases that you get in the box set um, just to to increase my infantry size and that actually is all the infantry you get in the set um, I think I ha added just an extra um, Panzer Shrek team from a, a different or Panzer Faust I can't I'll get confused which one's which from some infantry I had lying around so, so, so that one might be an, an extra piece but other than that everything was out in the box set so you can actually make a lot more infantry from that starter set than what is in the image um, so this is just kind of capturing the process I did for painting a little bit at least so primed white and then I used Nasdreg yellow contrast paint for the fatigues and the helmet 
Um, the green was Militarum green, I believe, and I think I may have then washed. No, what's the contrast green? Um, is it, it's a contrast green, a military green, maybe. Cadia green, I can't remember, sorry, apologies. I should have made notes of the, 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 the paints. And then gave it a wash with a military green. Um, and then Basilicum grey for the boots and parts of the rifles. A gore grunt of fur for the wood on the rifles. Um, I used Gulliman flesh for the, the faces and the hands. And this is, I believe, Agaros, Agaros Dune contrast paint, I think that is. Um, and then, yeah, I, th I think pretty much that's it. And this one, what what this one shows, whereas the others were camoed, these guys, I actually didn't bother camoing up, so I thought I would experiment with not doing the camo to see how they came out. And to be honest, I was, I was just as happy as the camo, and it saved a lot of time. Now, the other good thing was that if my infantry happen to get close together, I can see which ones fr from which unit, because the camo is obviously from this unit and the non-camo from this unit. So there was also a bit of a method for not having camo applied on these guys. Um, but yeah, it just saved me a lot of time, So and I was still happy with the result. And that is both infantry sections complete. So camoed version here and here and non camo here and as you can see from this kind of picture you can't see a lot of difference really so i'm happy that i didn't need the camo and i'm happy with how they've came out so that was the infantry done um, and actually there's more infantry there that i will probably use against rob um, although that's debatable and i'm still thinking about my list um, but we'll see at least i do have enough infantry to have a, an infantry section if i need to um, so then it was uh, time to move on to vehicles and here we go so I don't know why but I decided to do my test pieces using the Hommel artillery a um, bit risky really because I didn't have anything to replace them with if it went wrong I should have probably used one of my Panzer IVs that I have lots of um, but to be honest I was really eager to, to paint these particular tanks up i don't know why i um, just something about them intrigued me i think it was the large panels that i thought i could try and practice uh, camouflage using these um, tanks first because there's a lot large area i can practice a, a, a painting technique with so with these they were base coated with the primer um, zandri dust um, no sorry they were not they were primed with a Dunkel Gelb from, I want to say the Hobby Spray Vallejo range, I believe this was, um, but I do also have Dunkel Gelb from War Sprays from Plastic Soldier Company, so I've got both and I've used both on, on the models and there's not, it's not, there's not a great deal of difference between the two, um, but what I like to do with my primers is try to get primer close to the majority of the colour scheme that is visible just to save me a job of having to layer on the base paint so I just get the primer to do all the work. So primed it up with the Dunkel Gelb spray paint then I used a red brown air paint from Vallejo um, to paint in the first style of camo. Now what I did on this was I watered it quite down and feathered it up so I did a very watered down brown first and then I did, coming in a little bit from the edge, did a slightly less watered down and then slightly, so try and get a bit of a blend going from lighter to darker. Um, took a bit of time to be honest, um, but the, the results were quite good. Uh, you can see a bit of feather in there. So I was, I was kind of happy. And then the green, kind of similar sort of thing. I think it was a gunship green, a bit of a brighter green I used on that. Um, and just did the same sort of process. Um, and then once it was all done I dry brushed well I applied the, the decals first then I dry brushed it with a pale sand I think from Vallejo um, and before I dry brushed it I put a wash on the gun just to darken the gun up a bit I think it was Nagrax Earth on the gun but did some Agrax Earth in here I used a contrast paint for this called something sewer Gar Garak sewer or something but it's nice kind of a rusty brown color looks good for tracks I 
don't actually have the wheels painted yet but they will be done because obviously they don't look right there so they're a bit plain because they're not done in this image but I was happy with how they came out um, I'd love to do this with an airbrush I think it, you know the, the camouflage looks really great with airbrushes but a it's very cold outside so I don't want to do it um, and B I just wanted to crack on and get stuff done and to be honest I was also keen to see if I could do it just re with regular paintbrushes um, so I'm kind of happy that it, it's not a harsh line it looks nice and feathered not quite to the degree of an airbrush but it's not too it's not too sharp or harsh a line so I'm, I'm reasonably happy overall so with that and then I just some of the panel lines were picked out with like Agrax Earth um, washes and sepia washes and things like that um, so yeah I'm kind of happy with how they came out so I then decided to use the similar sort of uh, paint scheme to carry on with the other figures from the box set and this is what you can see here so this is not just a box set here this is pretty much all my german vehicles that i own um in various they're not spray but i think you can just pick out the difference in the colors there so one is a war army paint and no, not army painter war spray from plastic soldier company and dunkel gelb and then which i think is this one actually and then these three here were the vallejo dunkel gelb so there is a slight difference in shade but when you're using it as a base and then you put washes and colours on it, it really does it's not that visible. But that was the army all made out. Um, so after my finishing the three artillery pieces, I then did the Ostwinds because they also look awesome and I really like those tanks. Um, and I have painted the tracks, but in this image for some reason I've chose they're not painted. Um, but yes, yeah, exactly the same method as these. The only difference I did with these was I didn't do all the um, watering down to get a bit of a feathered edge to be honest again I, I, I was not happy with how long it was taking it's for the very small gain that it, that it showed so I tried just slapping it straight on watered down again still not straight from the bottle I mean the um, this one's the airbrush one so it's quite thin anyway but the green was watered down a little bit um, but I didn't go to the extreme as this where it was really really thin layers built up so this is just just regular two thin coats sort of watered down um, so it's a bit of a harsher line but once it was all dry brushed it's, it was so close to the finish of the one that took the took even longer that I was happy to to stick to this method and these are just some images in better lighting to hopefully show them off a bit better so you can see the uh, Ostwinds the Hummels artillery um, and then just on my in my gaming table uh, going through where there's better lighting and some some terrain so just lay them all out hopefully it gives you a bit of a better picture and better truer color reflection of of how they look um so with that done and I'm happy with how they look there's a bit of a lull i must admit um, didn't really do anything for a long while while i was doing other projects a bit of pc gaming was dragging me away and work and then christmas and then Rob kindly decided to release a video which spurred me into action again. So thanks Rob for uh, giving me a kick up the bum. And with seeing uh, how well he'd uh, got on with his, uh, his project, which obviously, as I said before, check out the link. Um, yeah, I, I, I realized I needed to, to get moving again. So I grabbed my Pumas which again, I really wanted to paint because they look great. And I uh, just wanted to see what I could do with those. And then also my three Panzer IVs from the set uh, to paint up as well. Because again, they're, they're probably one of my favorite German tanks actually. I know it's nothing special, but I don't know something about it, especially with these uh, bazooka skirts or Scherzen or whatever they're called. Just, just something about them looks, just makes them look really cool. Um, unfortunately, somehow when i've made this one i forgot to stick this part on and i've thrown them away so unfortunately this tank is missing a piece but at the same time i kind of think it looks like it's um, you know suffered damage in battle and they've removed it or something along those lines so a little bit annoying but i'm not you know see it's i'm not really really annoyed by it because i, I can i can give a reason behind it kind of uh 
narrative wise of why it's not there but here you can see again same pro process layering on you can see kind of one of this is kind of after i think one of maybe two um paints you know you can see it's not very a uniform color you can see brush marks and things like that in it so you can see kind of, kind of see how it goes on um i'll just slap it on and then just do a couple of coats until it's a nice uniform color and um, you can see it's especially down here how it's got the brush streaks in it um and yeah if, to some degree I'm, at that stage i'm thinking oh this looks terrible but if you just persevere with it just give it a couple of coats um by the time you then wash the whole tank which i use a sepia wash for it just to blend it all in a bit and, and just add a little bit more smoothing out of these brush strokes um, and then give it a dry brush you, it all disappears and looks pretty good so that you can see the stages of the paint in there um, and again this is the Puma's all wash but not yet dry brushed and no decals applied so they've, all, they've had a sepia wash and I've just gone in a bit deep darker on some of the grooves with a Agrax Earth I believe um, Basilicum grey for the tyres because it gives a nice like a worn rubber sort of look um, did the same for all the, the, the three panzers as well added the decals just added a little bit of Agrax around the edge for just make it look like a bit of mud flicked up um, don't think I washed these I actually forgot the wash and started dry brushing one up and then had to go back for the wash where these are these are washed here you can see a bit of a pooling of wash in there um, but yeah you can see the colors are a lot more solid it's because I've had a couple of layers now kind of it looks very stark compared to what my last images were but when you start dry brushing it kind of blurs it out and and it reduces that starkness it, uh, softens softens the uh, paint scheme so i'll show you in the ne next image um so yeah you can see these have been dry brushed and panzer four they're dry brushed and it just softens you up i mean i just sat it next to this because i did these weeks and weeks ago before this and to be honest i terrible memory i can never quite remember the process so i uh, i just sit them next to previous ones done just to make sure i'm kind of keeping a uniform look um but yeah, these, so these had the sepia wash, and then I've dry brushed it with the pale sand again. Go over with a bit of an edge highlight. I say highlight, it's not an edge highlight. It's, it's like a dry brush, but when I'm before all the uh, paint off the brush is fully off, I just go around catching all the edges first. And then that gives the time for the paint to uh, dry out a little bit. So when you start brushing, you don't get loads coming off. Um, obviously, you wipe it off on towel, paper towel first, but the first few bits of dry brushing are always quite powerful so I just use it to uh, catch the edges first and so then when I start dry brushing not too much comes off um, so yeah you can see by dry brushing it just softens the starkness of, of, of the camo and uh, breaks it up a little bit and just adds a little bit of um, sort of deserty kind of weather into it just caught the uh, edges of the tyres over and it uh, or rather the hubs and it actually caught some of the tire treads but i just left it because again it just seemed to add definition and dusty effect to the uh, tires so i was happy with that um and yeah can can't quite see what i've done it on but same sort of process as the, as these again on the panzer fours and again i just tried to take a bit of a better picture a better coloration um not really great at taking pictures to be honest but hopefully this it's a bit of a truer reflection of the actual colours and shades. Um, probably not the best surface to do with reflections, but hopefully that gives you an indication of how they all look. I've not painted the tank commander yet because I want to try and knock out the majority of the, of the, the paint schemes and the, the vehicles, and then I'll go back to do d details afterwards. So the commander shouldn't take too long with a bit of contrast paint. Um, but you can see I'm actually really happy with how they've came out. I was really nervous about doing these with brushes rather than airbrushes. Um, I kind of, I actually did want to do airbrush really because the finishing or the look of camo with airbrush is really, really good. But in the end, I was actually more happy with how these have came out with brushes than, than I was expecting. And there's just the three or the five I've done recently um, with the five that I've done few weeks ago um, you can see it looks nice and uniform and, and 
ties in nicely so really happy with the despite doing them quite far apart and not remembering quite the technique that it actually came out really well and there is the all the vehicles I've painted along with all the infantry I've painted so in that image it actually looks like a pretty decent force already um, however that isn't the army list I think pretty much everything there I will use um, because I need artillery I love Ostwins love the scouts love these tanks so I'll use all of those and you've got to have some infantry so to be honest I probably will use all of those so the only thing to decide on is is what my what I'm going to fill it up with now kind of want the Jag Panthers because they look great and they're in the set uh, but they're very expensive so I'll have to see how I can squeeze them in um, but essentially that I would say is my core force I if I'm correct, I can have this infantry, this infantry, and the Ostwins in a in a, in a group. Um, I can add the half tracks to the infantry as well, which I will do. Um, so that will be a reasonable size platoon, and then all formation. And then my other formation will be the Jag Panthers, probably. Um, unfortunately, I can't add Panzer Fours to that platoon, so the th Panzer Fours will have to be a support choice, as will the Hommels. Um, but we'll see. I'll have a play around with the uh, army lists. But kind of happy with how they came out. Um, you know, give me some critique if you want. I don't mind. Um, I know there's some little bits I need to finish, like these uh, road wheels, but the painting the rubbers um, could probably do a bit more to the guns and things like that. But that's kind of a extra detail I can do when I've got the core majority of the army done. So. That's it, and I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, again, sorry, it's a bit of a PowerPoint presentation. Um, I hate doing having them and watching them and giving them at work. So you know to be doing them <laughs> as a hobby uh, as well is kind of sucks. But um, hopefully we can get some video footage going forward, and hopefully. In a couple of months, I'm not going to say some dates yet because it's still to be finalised, but hopefully in a couple of months we'll actually have some games. Now, I'm intending or trying to have a practice game on Saturday with a fellow uh, gamer, a local gamer called Sedge. Hiya Sedge. Um, I think we'll just have a, um, like 50, 60 points, something like that. A few units on the board and, and just... I have played Flames of War, but I just need a refresher of, of what what to do um, never been comfortable with how assaults work uh, it just seems like a lot of rules to remember when it comes to assaults to be to be fair I know when we have done assaults they, they seem to go okay but I just know there's a lot to uh, to cover when it goes to that stage and mm -hmm. probably won't assault on purpose because then they don't have to know the rules and just shoot instead <laughs> but we'll see so yes yeah, that's the current position of my hobby I next stage I think is to do the half tracks I think um, so my infantry squads will then complete and I not think I'm going to paint the Yak Panthers because they look great I'm hoping to use them in, in my list um, so by painting them it will force me to try and use them Otherwise, it would probably need to be Panzer Fours and quite a lot of them. So at least by using the Yang Panthers, it reduces how many models I actually have to paint, even though they're probably a bit overkill with their guns for allies. I don't know. But I always find it funny that German weapons seem to be best against German vehicles um, and overkill for anyone else. <laughs> but I suppose it's kind of reflection of the true life uh, situation. Um, so yeah, hopefully the video was okay. Hopefully there was some stuff worthwhile in there and exciting. Um, again, apologies, it's been a few weeks before getting another one out. I will try to do them a bit more regular now. Um, most of it is down to just trying to find time to do this talk over of, of images, set, set up the images and put them in a presentation. So um, I need to get a bit better at that um, so hopefully over the course of the project we can keep improving and, and create better content um, 
yeah so until next time uh, get gaming <laughs>